It has been 2,500 days since Zombies Chronicles dropped for Black Ops 3, and today we're going to revisit all 8 maps in this map pack, starting with Nocturne and Toten. Alright, here we are. Welcome back to Nocturne and Toten, welcome back to Black Ops 3 Zombies Chronicles. So for each of the 8 maps, I do have something specific in mind, whether it's a challenge or something I just want to do in each map. For Nocturne and Toten, I think we're going to do a box roulette challenge. And for those of you who don't know what that means, starting on round 3, I'm going to get to the mystery box, and every round I'm going to get a new random gun. And we're going to keep getting random guns until we get to round 30. All right, there we go, round three. Let's open the help door here and see what we get for our very first weapon of the challenge. All right, it's not bad. I honestly would have preferred a sniper given how far away they are right now, but uh, you know, this is at least a good weapon. I can get a lot of points with this to open up the rest of the map and start thinking about perks. Or we can do that. So if you still aren't sure how the challenge works, we're spinning again and whatever we get here we have to take. So goodbye Weevil, hello KN44. And we're gonna do that up until round 30. Now while we're doing that, I would like to also start opening the rest of the map to get perks, but I don't think we're gonna have the money for that on round four. There's round four done, and now we get a new gun. You know, what weapon more appropriate? Until they add a Thompson to this map, I don't think there is one. So as for perks, I'm thinking Jug and Quick Revive, obviously. And because this map doesn't have any kind of Pack-a-Punch, I'm thinking we go for Double Tap. We're not allowed to buy Mule Kick. And for the fourth perk, I'm thinking Widow's Wine just for the additional safety. But I don't know how rare Widow's Wine is on this map. Anyway, it's time to get ourselves a new gun. What do you have for us this time? Ooh, I said what gun more appropriate, and you know what? I think this might be a little more appropriate. Gonna let the cat out of the bag with this one. The STG is my own personal favorite weapon in all of Call of Duty. World at War is my favorite multiplayer, and this was the only assault rifle in that game. Obviously a World War II game, so the only other rifles in the game were like the Gewehr and the M1 Grand and other single shot rifles, but the STG in that game, just all purpose, all greats, pretty much all the time, and it wasn't an MP40. So why don't we see what we're gonna get for round seven? Now I'll take a dredge. Not my favorite weapon, but it's round seven. We can make it work. Speaking of making it work, we should probably get perks now. There's one. What about another one? And nah, I'm good. What about another one? I, I'm, I'm still good. I don't need stamina up today. Thank you. We'll be seeing you in another map, but not, not yet. Deadshot. Yeah, I'm, I'm very good. We won't be seeing you at all, actually. Thank you very much. And we're due for a new gun. What are you gonna give me now? Okay, we can take a thunder gun. You know, I'm I'm happy about this, but uh, round eight kind of don't need all this power, and I kind of really need some points. And uh, thunder gun's not exactly the definition of a point gun, but it is the definition of a fun gun. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, we could do a death machine. Insta kill. I'm holding a death machine and a thunder gun. I already got insta kill. Oh, but you know what? I can knife. Wow, we're just we're not gonna use this thunder gun in this entire round. Wow, what a scam. We have to get rid of our thunder gun now. What what are we trading our thunder gun for? A KRM unpack a punched. Cool. And you can sort of see why this is a challenge. Because uh, on round 9, this isn't really an issue. But if this is round 29, we have a few more problems. Also, because ammo is eventually going to come up, there is a wall buy for the KRM on this map. I am allowed to use it, 
won't need to on round 9, but if we get a situation on round 29 where I need to buy ammo, I can. Alright, let's see what we get this time. Okay, we're we're downgrading. So another thing you saw there that I do differently from other people's challenges, I'm not keeping the guns from prior rounds. We still don't need Deadshot. Some people do this challenge where if you can't complete the round with the gun you got for that round, you can keep the guns from prior rounds and use them to continue the game. For this challenge, if I can buy ammo off the wall, I will. And if I can complete the round with either my knife or M1911, I will. But I think to make this as easy as possible for myself. If I run out of ammo and can't complete the round with my knife grenades and M1911, I'm just gonna buy a new gun from the mystery box and use that. Obviously I'm trying to complete the round with whatever I get, but if we get like a Shiva on round 29, well Shiva's a bad example because there's a wall buy for that, but you know what I mean, we're just not gonna be able to do it. Speaking of the Shiva, I'm kind of hoping you don't give me that right now. Well, you didn't give me a Shiva, but you might have gave me something worse. You know, I guess I should just be happy that I'm getting the XM out of the way now. Because if this was round 29, this would be impossible. Stop giving me stamina. What the fuck? I've spun the Wonder Fizz, I think, five times, and I've got stamina up three times and deadshot twice. Yeah, there we go. Very efficient point gun. Another very efficient point gun. Guys, I, I don't want to be that guy who complains about getting the thunder gun twice, but uh, it's a very low round and I need money. It, stop. I There's three perks in there that are fairly common that I don't have yet. Anyway, we are getting rid of our thunder gun again. For a Gorgon, oh, that, that hurts. That hurts my soul. Anyway, the Gorgon should at least be good for headshots. Headshots should be good for points. And points will be very good for getting ourselves a perk other than stamina up, deadshot, or speed cola. I hope. Alright, he's the end of round. I'm gonna scooch by him and get ourselves a perk. Big money, please be one of the three I need. There's one. It's, it's stamina up again. I'm repairing windows to try and get enough for another spin. We spin, and then the next kill will give us our next box hit. And there's quick revive. We have the thousand IQ play. So as long as you don't give me monkey bombs, we should be good. Okay, thank God. I was fully expecting to get monkey bombs and have to M1911 my way to another 150 points. Okay, he's the end of round. What are the odds we can do this again? Widow's Wine? Hell yeah! And we, we get to keep the double points too. We got perfect plays. But do we have perfect box RNG? We do! I am more than happy with Akuda, especially when ammo is right here. And there we go. So what are you gonna give me now? Another BRM. All right, another LMG. All right, new gun, what do we got? Alright, ICR, not bad. I don't want to say it out loud, but my box luck has been really good. Apart from the one XM53 we got and getting Thunder Guns a little earlier than I would like, it's been going really well. Huh, ran out of ammo a little faster than I anticipated. Now I do have alchemical in my gobblegum machine. Am I gonna be able to pull one? 
No, but that is an improvement. Alright, this is coming down to the wire here. Alright, so note to self, we are going to have to train a little bit. Unless we get another LMG, then we're fine. Alright, what do you have for me now, magic box? Okay, that's not great. There is ammo for the Pharaoh up there, so this round is technically completable. I'm just not gonna like the game very much for making me do this. Ooh, max ammo and an insta-kill. That is hot. I won't have to buy ammo for my Pharaoh now. And also I get my M1911 ammo back, which may come in handy if this gun is terrible, which it is. I have to go and check. I'm fairly certain there is a wall buy for you around here somewhere. Oh, you know, I'm thinking of the Revelations Nocturne and Toten. On Rev, there's one right there, but not here. So, uh, at this point, I'm probably gonna have to get a new gun. Unless I get banger drops this round, and throughout the entire round, I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid that. Okay, well, there's one. And even then, it took half my ammo to get that. So, uh... I don't know if, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this. I'm fairly certain the nuke I got killed more zombies than that entire Elkar. And I'm not sure my entire M1911 killed a single one. All right. Well, we're gonna have to get a new weapon here. And you know, that really isn't much better, but uh, at least this way I know I won't have to get a third weapon. See, like, look how much better this shotgun is against groups than the Elkar. Like, why does that gun even exist? I was fully expecting to get the Elkar back, but uh, this one might be worse. Cause like, at least I can dump all the ammo in an Elkar relatively quickly and move on. This is gonna take forever. <laughs> Oh, thank God, Death Machine. And having ammo back in the M1911, not bad either. But let me tell you what's really not bad is this boy right here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Spider-Man meme again. Well, I have eight more shots in the M1911. <laughs> Thanks, video games. Just give me my new gun. Something that's actually good this time. I don't know if I'd quite call the M8A7 good, but I know I wouldn't call it bad. This and like the Argus are probably the only two that I would describe as okay. If this were a tier list, these are the two that go into mid. So unless one of you wants to drop a max ammo for me, I'm probably gonna have to get a new gun. All right, nothing. Hey, speak of the devil, the other mid gun. Is that a max ammo that just dropped? Why am I getting all the drops now? What? I'm getting all the drops now! This is bullshit! Give me a gun that's good. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Round 25. Well, that sucks. That went better than I thought it would. But how is the next round gonna go? Very well. I don't know what the odds of getting the Thunder Gun on this map are, but uh, I've gotten three now? Why am I getting a death machine on this round? And at the end of the round, no less. I'm pretty sure he's all that's left. Oh, no, there's one more. What are we trading our thunder gun for now? Okay, the weevil's good on the ammo, not so good on the damage. I think if we're hoarding them all up, we should be okay here. All right, what do you have for me now? 
Alrighty, not bad, not bad at all. I would have preferred we end with the Mark II, but uh, I guess this is also fine. Yeah, one mag for a horde. I'm pretty okay with that. Insta-kill? Boy, do you see what weapon I have? I already have insta-kill. Stop giving me all the good drops now that I have a good weapon. I need them for later, video game. Well, hopefully I get something great for round 29 or I'm gonna be in trouble. All right, what am I trading my Mark II for? Okay. Of all the weapons left in the box, you're probably the most similar to a Mark II. That's actually not really true, but like, you're at least good? I mean, you're good for getting a zombie or two out of my way when you're pack-a-punched and have Thunderwall, but uh, I have no idea how you're gonna fare now. It's like a two-shot kill with double tap on nearly round 30, unpack-punched. It's really impressive, but uh, yeah, not a lot of ammo. I'm only using the M1911 in the hopes that one of them will drop me a max. Oh wait, you know what? I have alchemical and I'm pretty sure I'm in a new gun cycle? Maybe I can pull one here. Yeah, there we go. I don't need a new gun after all. There we go, round 30. Just out of curiosity, what are you gonna give me now? Well, thank God we don't actually have to do round 30. So here we are on Verrucht. So on Nocturne and Toten, we did ourselves a box roulette challenge for a bit of fun, and I have a good challenge for Verrucht lined up as well. The challenge for Verrucht is not dying. The rules are very simple. I need to play Verrucht without dying. Listen, this is a hard map, and I'm not very good at this particular hard map, but I have a strategy in mind that I haven't actually tried on this version of Verrucht or any prior ones, but it is supposedly the fastest way to play this map, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. But first, we're gonna have to open up the map and get the power on. Ah! Die. All right, let's open up this door, and then this door, and this door. Turn on the power, and hit the box. Right now, we're looking for a Wonder Waff, but until then, I'll take an AK. I'm also gonna go ahead and take some Jug, and a little Quick Revive. And in a little bit, we're gonna try and get Speed Cola as our third perk, and get stamina up from the Wonder Fizz. But, uh, first, we're gonna get that Wonder Waff right now, if you don't mind. You know, that is a wonder weapon. Not the one I had in mind, but uh, it'll do for now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open this door and open this door. We're gonna grab Speed Cola and we are now in our new home. So as you can see, most of the zombies are spawning from this window here and this one right here. We're gonna leave that door here closed. And once we get the wonder waff, we're gonna be camping slash training in here. And this is supposedly the fastest way to get to round 100 on Verrucht, at least in BO3. We are not going for round 100 in this video because I'm not insane, but I would like to use that strategy to try and go for round 30 and just kind of see how things go. But uh, we're gonna need a Wonder Waff to do that. Ah, so close. Hey, not bad. I, I guess we'll drop the ray gun. Our second weapon doesn't matter because we don't have any gobble gums to get us pack a punch, but eventually we will pick up the HPK that's right here. It's just a close wall buy that we can use for insta kill and getting points when we need them, but uh, we're gonna be using the Wonder Waffer pretty much the entire game, given the whole, you know, it's an unpack a punched HPK, it's not gonna be good past like round 15. But before we do that, we're gonna be using the Man of War to try and get stamina up as our fourth perk, which given our situation on Nocturne and Toten shouldn't be too difficult. I sure hope we didn't use all of our stamina pluck on Noct. 
Uh-huh. I said I hope we didn't use all of our stamina pluck on Noct's. Are you kidding me? Well, I guess we're going another round. We're gonna go ahead and buy the HVK now. And we're gonna go ahead and buy stamina. Thank you. Yeah, so for the first 15-ish rounds, we're gonna be able to hold out with just the HVK here. If we got double tap, we could probably do 20, but uh, we definitely be pushing it because we're gonna get to a point where even with a good gun, it's just not gonna be fast enough to deal with how fast the zombie spawns are. We obviously don't have the World at War Verruckt Super Sprinters on this map, but as you can see, they're spawning out of two locations that are both fairly close, and once they all start running properly, that's gonna give us very little time to react. We're gonna be using the Wonder Waff and only the Wonder Waff, and we need Speed Cola to reload it in time. It's gonna be that fast. But for now, I think it's safe to cue the HVK montage. Alright, it's round 15 and the HVK is already dropping off a little bit. So now that we're primarily relying on the Wonder Waff, you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're just kind of hoarding them up a little bit. And once we have about 10, we shoot and... That, that's, that's pretty much it. So ideally, I'm going to be using the HPK as much as I can at the start of a round, just to kill as many as I can before having to switch back to the Wonder Waff. And then once we start getting overrun here, just switch to the Waff. Zappy zappy for the rest of the round. Honestly, it's a really fun strategy so far. I'm a big fan of strategies like this that are fast and frantic. The one big problem with this strategy is that it's really hard to tell which zombies the Wonder Waff is affecting and which ones aren't. Oh my god, I got one tapped. Because the Unpack a Punched Wonder Waff can only kill, I think, 10 zombies at a time. And there are 24 zombies on the map at any given time. And the Wonder Waff's electricity chains are from what I understand, completely random. Obviously, it can only affect zombies that are so close to you, but if there are, say, 10 or 12 that are kind of near you, it can be any one, like that one. The Wonder Waff shocked all the zombies behind the three that were in front of me, and that caused me to die. Which is why a lot of the people who run this strategy will bring in something like a crate power to get this Wonder Waff pack-a-punched. I am not doing that because I don't want to cheat. Which is unfortunate because now that happens, but... Eh, what can you do? I'd rather go down on round 20 than participate in pay-to-win bullshit. But I had fun. On to Shinonuma. Alright, and here we are on Shinonuma. On Nocturne and Toten, the challenge was a box roulette challenge. On Verrukt, we did a try not to die challenge. We uh, didn't do so great at that challenge, but hopefully this one is a little bit better. Here on Shinonuma, we are doing a two box challenge. If you guys don't know what a two box challenge is, it's really simple. We get two hits at the box, and whatever weapons we get, we have to use for the rest of the the game. This is a challenge that does kind of rely on luck a fair bit, because obviously if we get two guns that aren't very good, we're not going to have a very good time. And if none of our guns are very good on ammo, then we're going to have an even worse time of things. But we should be alright, because there are various traps around the map we can use if we don't get good weapons. Now the box spawns right down there in every game of Shinonuma, so I'm thinking we use this double points here and then we head on down. Our first gun is going to be... Alright! Not bad. Not bad at all. The Dingo is probably one of the five best weapons we could have got for this challenge. Gonna be good for points, gonna be good for damage, gonna be good for pretty much everything. Now ideally the next gun we get is going to be a wall buy because then we don't have to worry about ammo for the entire challenge. But before we get that second gun, I think I'm gonna focus on getting ourselves a perk. Now ideally we get Jug here because as you can see the perks are random. 
Ah, double tap isn't bad. I'm not gonna buy it yet because we do really need Jug first, but we may come back and pick this guy up. It depends on what our other weapon is. And we're gonna open up to storage and see if we can't get Jug to spawn over here. Now it's one in three. I would very much like it for it to be Jug. Okay, Speed Cola's not bad. I'm not gonna buy that yet either, because I do really want to get Jug as soon as we can. And depending on what our second weapon is, I may decide to not pick it up at all. So we're gonna open to the Flogger, and we're gonna see if we can't get Jug right here. Should be one in two chance? Uh, of course. So unfortunately, that means that Juggernog is at the comms room. Now, a lot of people like to train at the comms room, and while it's a good spot, I personally prefer to train here by the flogger, because then I get to make use of this trap, and it's really good. But it also lets me leave this door and this door closed and camp in this little hideout area for the first 15 or so rounds. But now I'm going to have to open that door to get to that building over there, which now is guaranteed to have Jug. So what I'm gonna do is camp here for the next, I don't know, five rounds. I'm fairly certain that I can survive until probably like round 15 with a dingo in this little area without Jug. And if anything goes wrong, I can't open this door. And to help out, I think it's time we take our second box hit and see what we get. Okay, that's that's kind of tough. Now, this is better than the M14 in Black Ops 1. And while the MX Grand is going to drop off faster than the Dingo, my big concern is that neither gun I got is a wall buy. So that means that ammo is going to be a little bit of an issue. Or at least it might be. You know, I can use the flogger here, save a little ammo that way. And I can end up using the guns I have as point guns, essentially. So, uh, I've been here a little longer than I thought I I would be. I kind of figured I'd leave for Jug around, I don't know, around 10, 12, 15 at latest. But uh, the Dingo here is still really good. It is running a little low on ammo, but this is a two shot to the head. So uh, yeah, note to self, Dingo good. Are we are we just audibling into a no Jug challenge at this point? I mean, we might as well, right? I mean, at this point, how long I can camp here is a far more interesting question than a two box challenge. I'm, I'm trying to stay here as long as I can. How am I still here, man? The Dingo should not be this good. Okay, we have to go. At the end of the day, it wasn't even the ammo or damage that let me down, it was the reload. If I bought Speed Cola, I definitely could have stayed here. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get Jug. Thank you. I think I might have dismissed the MX Grand a little prematurely. It's not bad. Like, I'm having to reload more often than I would like, but if you get those headshots, like, it's pretty nasty. <laughs> I kind of like the, the MX Grand. This might be a slept on gun. I don't know. Oh, and we got stamina first try. Nice. This entire commentary is just gonna be MX grand propaganda, but like, I'm, I'm shocked. It's actually good. I also just don't really know what else to talk about with Shino Numa, because, like, we've kind of already seen the entire map. Let's go ahead and flog him. Oh, hi. Why are you here? That wasn't all of them, apparently. Honestly, I love the creative traps like this so much more than an, an electric trap or a fire trap. You know, obviously we know that fire and electricity are dangerous and will hurt you, but it takes a creative game to say, yeah, let's put two logs with spikes on whatever the fuck this spinning thing is and just have it whack people. But uh, yeah, there's not really a whole lot left to talk about with this map, so um, cue the montage? So at the end of round 29, OBS started to have an encoding overload error, which caused the video to record at whatever FPS this is. But after taking it down, I was able to hit round 30 and move on to Kino Der Toten. All right, Kino Der Toten. So Nocturne and Toten was a box roulette challenge, Verrucht was just trying to survive, and Shino Numa was a two box challenge. And for Kino, I have something a little bit different in mind. Many of you have seen my Racing to Reach Prestige Master in Black Ops 3 Zombies video, and I want to do a little bit of a test run for the sequel. When I was playing Kino in that video, I was training in the alleyway, and I was using Widow's Wine as one of my perks, 
And I would like to see if I can do that strategy without Widow's Wine. I'm specifically thinking about replacing it with Stamina Up as well as Double Tap. And I just want to see if I'm able to train out in the alleyway without Widow's Wine. I know there are a lot of people out there who can do it. I don't know if I am one of them. So that's what I'm going to be doing and we're going to try and get to, I don't know, round 50. See if we can do that. Not really a high round run, but you know, a lot more substantial than round 30. That is a huge insta-kill, huge double points. Can you name a more iconic duo? Can you name a more iconic trio? Let's open that door, and that door, and this other door, and even the this door right here. And turn the power on. Uh, and there was one place I was worried about you spawning, and uh, yep, you're there. We'll buy Jug, and a link the mainframe. All right, and so now that we have the money, we can go ahead and open this door, and now we can hit the box. I really don't like that I had to open that door, but it is necessary to run the strategy we need. Well, leaving that door closed is what's necessary. Ideally, we can leave that one closed. All right, I do need a thunder gun, so if you don't mind giving me that quickly, one off. I actually don't know if getting a thunder gun in that spot means you were one off. I don't know if the mystery box works like a wheel of fortune wheel, but I kind of assume it does because it's more fun that way. But anyway, if you want to go ahead and give me a thunder gun now. It, it showed me the thunder gun twice and didn't give it to me either time. And I got the minimum amount of box spins before it could move. Sick. Alright, now if you can give me a thunder gun, that'd be great. Okay, we might be here a while. Okay, so what I'm gonna do just to get through rounds a little quicker is I'm gonna open that door and I'm gonna open that door and we're gonna kill as many zombies as we can out here instead. The spawns here are way faster and I don't have to deal with Nova Crawlers so we might as well get used to being out here. And then once I get a whole bunch of money we'll go back in get our thunder gun get our other two perks and then we'll be pretty much set for a high round run. Twenty-five grand should be more than enough for a thunder gun here. I say that, but the first time I played Kino on PC, I spun the box a hundred times and didn't get it. I sure hope that doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you, game. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Fuck you. Listen, I'm happy to see you, Thunder Gun, but you didn't have to take all of my money. Some of that would have been very useful to get stamina up. Fine, I'll guess I'll get the money again. Okay, we have a dog around and our stamina up luck has been pretty darn good. So we might as well try. That's uh, the perk I'm trying to replace. Nope. Nope, three spins and we're still yet to get a perk that includes color. There we go. Again, they just all have to take all of my money. I don't understand why. I guess it's not that big a deal. We got what we need on a pretty low round. The only thing I want to do now is I'm going to swap out the FFAR here for that VMP on the wall. And then I'm going to pack a punch it, put an alternate ammo type on it, and then probably pack a punch the thunder gun too. Kind of just depends on how much money I have. Hence why I'm still using the FFAR. And you know, now seems like as good a time to do this. It's 
So we'll do a few rounds in here, we'll get an alternate ammo type, probably turned or dead wire on the VMP, then we'll also pack a punch of the thunder gun. So part of what I wanted to test with this game is how well I can do with stamina up instead of Widow's Wine. It's a low round, so it's kind of hard to tell how it will hold up, but right now I am very much liking it. And you can also see I'm training in this little area here instead of out here. And the reason I'm doing that is because as we can see here, zombies are dropping down from the rooftop here. And that did get me caught a few times when I was going for my prestige on Kino. And if I train over here, I can avoid that. But obviously over here, I have a little less room to work with than over here, especially since uh, this area here is a cul-de-sac. And it also means I need to keep that door closed because otherwise it kind of fucks up the spawns. Now leaving that door closed is not a big deal because I can get into that room up there through the stage. However, there is a second high round strategy, an actually faster high round strategy than training in the alleyway, where you're in that room up there using alternate ammo types and the trap to get through rounds beyond round 100. Sometimes you want to go to that strategy around round 90-ish just because of ammo related reasons. So if I use this strategy and need to go into that room for whatever reason, I have to open through the stage door. And that means eliminating the possibility of using that high round strategy. So there is a little bit of a trade-off, but right now I'm thinking that might be worth it when I go for a thousand. Okay, I didn't quite mean to end round, but I did want to get an AAT on this gun. I'll take turned or dead wire, whichever one I get first is fine. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and because I went for a pack a punch this round and left the alleyway, there are Nova Crawlers out here and I hate them die. Anyway, that's all there really is to this particular strategy, so why don't we cue the montage and I'll check back in once we get to a higher round. So I don't know if round 45 is the fastest the zombies are going to spawn in this game, but I'm pretty sure I know how I feel about this strategy. And how I feel about this strategy is that I really like it. Training in this area to me feels very similar to training on Ascension, specifically the spot by PhD where you have all that open space in an area that's pretty much a square. This area is basically that, but a little smaller and slightly different spawn points. So it's really easy to do, although not as easy as Ascension. Way easier than being out in this area right here. Don't have to worry about guys falling down. Don't have to worry about guys being behind me. There's two very predictable entryways, and that's all I really have to worry about. And because it's so much easier, easier to hoard up zombies, I can use my thunder gun ammo a lot more efficiently. You guys probably saw in the montage that I'm shooting the thunder gun in basically the same spot every time with a full horde basically every time. And compared to what I was doing out over here, big, big improvements. I mean, this area is so big that if my thunder gun ever runs out of ammo, I could pretty much run alternate ammo types and get the job done. So if I ever miss a max ammo or a max ammo is delayed in my drop cycle, not an issue at all. But speaking of ammo, you also notice that I still have a regular ass thunder gun and that's just because it's that much more ammo efficient that I haven't had a max ammo dry spell and had to pack a punch yet. And of course by delaying pack a punch, I'm delaying the ammo increase from pack a punching. I also just generally like not having Widow's Wine here. I mean, great perk and all, but managing the grenades is just one other thing I have to do. And if I don't have to do that to survive, I don't think I should. Especially when movement with stamina up is so nice and smooth. The only complaint I've had throughout this entire run is that I realized just when death machines become 
almost unviable? Without double tap, my death machine was falling off by round 40. I mean, you compare it to having insta-kill and it's a night and day difference. It will still kill and it's still a good drop to have because it ultimately saves ammo into thunder gun. You have to have really good positioning to make it work and I, I don't know, the death machine exists to let you be overpowered for half a minute. Why do I have to worry about my positioning if I want to be overpowered? Anyway, we still haven't pack a punch our thunder gun, and at this point, if we don't, we'll never do it. Oh, and it's a freaking dog round too. Isn't that great? All right, we're gonna pack a punch the thunder gun for one round, and then we're gonna be moving on. There we go, the Zeus cannon. Yeah. The, the Zeus cannon, it's better now. You'll never know because dog. But look at that, round 50. Nito, it's been a while since I've seen you, friend. Hi. Ow, stop. I'm dying. Anyway, we're all done here. On to Ascension. Alright, so here we are on Ascension. So what I have planned for Ascension is very similar to what I had planned for Kino. This is another map where I would like to practice what I plan to do for level 1000, and I'd also like to try and drop Widow's Wine from my strategy. So we're gonna get to the power room, get ourselves a thunder gun and all that jazz once again, and we're gonna try and train at that power room without Widow's Wine until about round 50. Now obviously Ascension isn't a map that I'm really worried about reaching round 100 on. If you saw my Prestige Master video, you know that despite how that game went, reaching round 100 really isn't out of the question. So long as uh, we don't have an incident with any perks in particular, uh, we we should be we should be perfectly fine for round 100 again. But if I could drop Widow's Wine from the strategy, it would make resource management a lot easier, since I don't have to be worried about picking up Widow's Wine grenades all the time. And it'll make the whole strategy a lot more consistent because I don't have to worry about whether or not I have a Widow's grenade when I get hit. And in theory, it should make it a lot easier to round up an entire horde and get them all with one thunder gunshot, which means I won't have have ammo issues like I had in my last ascension run. Anyway, we got ourselves a cool 9k at the end of round 4 here. Oh my god. This won't kill me. Oh, we're almost We got we got a barrier here. We got 935k. Hey. We can go ahead and open this door and this door here. And we can open this door here and turn on the power. Now I would like a gun. If you can give me the thunder gun right now or Gersh's right now, that'd be cool. But I'll take anything that can shoot, and this can indeed shoot. And we can go ahead and open this door and spawn and pick up Jug. And I guess while we're here, we might as well get Pack-a-Punch going. There's one, there's number two, and there we have number three. And we might as well open the Pack-a-Punch while we're here. What are the odds you give me a ray gun so I can blow up that rocket? Not very good. Die. Oh well. So we're not ready for the strategy just yet, but I do think I'm gonna spend time up here. Or not, okay. I was gonna say I'm gonna spend time up there to get through the rounds quickly so I can make money to get the Thunder Gun and start the strategy. But I think we have to take care of this beforehand. Get off my quick revive. Not again. There we go. So as I was saying, I'm going to be up here just to get through these early rounds as quickly as possible. And all the money I get will go towards the box. And then at some point I'll pick up Speed Cola and stam it up. Alright, we got a cool 25 grand. We can probably get at least one thing we want. Yes! Alright, this location is lucky. You're gonna give me Gersh right now. And what do you have for me now? Uh, no. 
All right, but I mean, this is the strategy without Widow's Wine. As you can see, quite hectic. When I first tried learning this strategy, I downed in the teens because I ran into the Gobblegum machine there. And then I went to Widow's Wine as my safety net which I'm currently trying to avoid doing. I'm making it work right now, but it is a lot more stressful than it is without Widow's Wine. And even now on round 18, it's already considerably more challenging than Kino. Yeah, I guess for my purposes, I don't really need to have Gersh's. I would very much like them, especially if I want to go far. But for right now, it's okay if I don't have them. Right now, it feels like the real trick is learning when and where to sprint and also obviously for how long because I am I'm surviving but I'm getting slapped up this might be a strategy where I just kind of need stamina up to make it work so I think after the next monkey round I'll pick up speed cola and stamina up and just see how it goes and I'll I'll hold off judgment until then there we go. All right, now I don't think this is the ideal visually appealing layout, but we're next to stamina up already, and we'll pick up speed cola while we're here. You know, I don't want to use a thunder gun shot on this. We have another anywhere but here if we need it, and honestly, we shouldn't be going down with a thunder gun. If we're going down, that kind of tells me that I'm going to need Widow's Wine to get through this round 100. Which, to be clear, I'm fine with. I should have had it when I went for round 100 the first time. But I would like to try new things. If only for the sake of trying. And I gotta say, I've had stamina up, up here for about uh, one second but I already like it. Granted, you know, round 22, but I'm making it work. I should at some point here drop the KRM for the RK5 again, and I, I would really like Gersh's, but honestly at this point I don't think it's gonna happen. I just don't think I'm gonna have the money to get Gersh's from the box before I hit round 50, because this is a great strategy for speed. It's not exactly what you would call point efficient. So I'm noticing another problem with stamina up over Widow's Wine, which is fine. It's not a necessary perk like Juggernog or Quick Revive. I was perfectly fine with them taking Widow's Wine when I did my round 100 run, the problem is that stamina up is in the opposite direction, whereas Widow's Wine was on the way to where I'm going anyway. So I'm gonna lose a little bit of time every single time I try and get stamina up, which is a little bit annoying, but we'll have to make do, I guess. Okay, I don't feel like I need Speed Cola to figure out what exactly I'm doing up here, because if I shoot the Thunder Gun, everything here dies. You know, with that in mind, I almost wonder whether it'd be a good idea to drop speed cola instead of widow's wine although i mean it's really easy to get a whole horde without widows so i don't know i kind of feel like this is the right way to go yeah honestly didn't take too long to learn the strategy once you get stamina i think i might have just got spooked early in my original strats or maybe i didn't have stamina i don't remember although that gobblegum machine it's it's still kind of in the way sometimes i don't love it being there like it could have been in the corner right here would have been a lot more comfortable to get through that particular gap. But I mean, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I'm kind of thinking maybe I shouldn't do the next 20 rounds. I know I said we'll go for round 50 like we did on Kino, but I'm not sure I really learned all that much in the last 20 rounds of Kino. You know, yeah, I've I've decided we're gonna we're gonna kill them going for stamina up. And then we're just gonna end a game. I'm sorry if you wanted to see me hit round 50 on Ascension. If you want to watch that, watch my Prestige Master video. Uh, and I would I would encourage you to not watch what happens after round 50, because it's heartbreaking. <laughs> okay, here we are on Shangri-La. So this is going to be yet another game preparing for level 1000. When I was going for Prestige Master, I tried a few different high round strategies, but ultimately did not have a whole lot of success. The two strategies that I tried are widely considered the two easiest strategies for Shangri-La, which, you know, on a map like Shangri-La doesn't really say a whole lot. Even the easy strategies on this map are still pretty difficult, but I didn't try what is widely considered the optimal high round strategy because every 
every video guide I found on this strategy said it was not only the hardest strategy in this version of Shangri-La, but the hardest strategy in BO3 as a whole. And because I'm a high round novice, I decided it would probably be best to not try that strategy and just go for the safer strategies that they also recommended. But I'm here now to try what is widely considered the best but hardest strategy for Shangri-La round 100. And if it goes well, great, I can potentially use it for level 1000. If it doesn't, I don't have to try it ever again, and we can just do what we did last time for another high round run, if I even play Shangri-La for level 1000. That strategy will take us through this door right here, but I think I'm gonna play another round or two just to get some points. Alright, that should be more than enough money. We're gonna open that door, and that door, and this door right here, and believe it or not, this door too, and we're gonna turn on the power twice, and then we're gonna open that door, and one final door before we buy the CUDA. And the best part is that now we get to run all the way back to spawn, and then we can buy this door and buy Jug. And now we have the entire map opened except for this door right here, which is one that we're going to leave closed. Because now we can go all the way back to the area with the CUDA, and this is where we're going to be training for the entire game. This area has incredibly fast spawns. This area is also not exactly very big, but you can train in here, which is what we're going to be doing once we get the baby gun and put dead wire on the CUDA. In the meantime, we are going to be training in here to get some points to get the money to afford all of those things, as well as stamina up and speed cola. And if we can get some free perks from monkeys, all the better. Ideally, we would want double tap. If we get mule kick, we can get a gun and put turned on it. Not sure I want to do that just on the off chance I lose my baby gun, and we are going to try and avoid Widow's Wine just because it makes the strategy very inconsistent, but if we get it we can always just throw the grenades away and be perfectly fine. Speaking of perfectly fine, now seems like a good time to get ourselves Speed Cola, as well as Stamina Up, and that way if we get a max ammo from any of the monkeys we can go ahead and try for a free perk without worrying about getting something we don't want. In the meantime we'll be hanging out in this room building up up points to try and hit the box for that baby gun, and if we can get monkey bombs too that would be really helpful, and then once we get to about round 15 or so we'll pack a punch the CUDA and try and put dead wire on it. Ooh, free perk try number one. Where the hell is he? Where did he go? Monkey? Did he make it up here? I'm confused. Where did he go? I have been scammed. He didn't show up at all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pack a punch the CUDA. If I get another max ammo, I would like a little bit more firepower. And if we can get dead wire early, that would be killer. There we go. I'm sure we'll get another max ammo eventually. Okay, it's after double points. Where did he go? He's not here again! Did he fucking disappear after going up the geyser? I don't understand. Okay, well we don't need additional perks. I'm more just annoyed that they keep getting away. Either there's a mechanic that I don't understand or this is somehow bugged. In either case, I have a lot of money and would like a baby gun. Many unbearable hours later. The thing that I need. Thank you. So the strategy for round 100 is basically training in here. I, of course, am not very good at this yet because I've never done it before until just now. And because we're on such a low round, it's kind of hard to do this properly anyway because the zombies aren't spawning in as quickly as I need them to for this to be consistent. But the loop you do basically ends up looking a little something like this. 
before then you shoot and then kill all of them. I didn't shoot there because the napalm killed pretty much all of them. But that's how you make it consistent for rounds 70 and beyond. The way you end up playing for the first 60 or so rounds is basically just by going crazy with the baby gun. Because you can get max ammos from the monkeys pretty much four times a round if you're kind of on the ball, you really don't have to worry about running out of ammo in the baby gun. I don't particularly love doing this because the baby gun in this version of Shangri-La is kind of jank. I don't know how well you you can see in the gameplay, but when I'm running into zombies, I'm not running through them, but bonking into them before then running through them. And that's slightly annoying because the movement isn't nearly as fluid, but in that time a zombie can get to the side of you and you end up missing them, which is not ammo efficient. But you do also take some damage from baby zombies when you hit them or when they hit you. And because it's kind of hard to tell how much damage you take when it's not a regular zombie hit, it's really just a crapshoot of how much health do you have. It's part of the reason that even though the baby gun is statistically one of the best wonder weapons of all time, and one of my own personal favorites thematically, I didn't really like using it until very recently, and even then I'd still gladly take a thunder gun over it. It's the one time where I really wish I had a health bar in BO3, cause like I have no idea how much health I have until I'm one shot. If any of you guys know how to counter that sort of issue, please let me know in the comments because I would very much like to know. I I'm gonna go ahead and pack a punch the JGB. I was able to make the strat work for the first little bit, but uh, I'm struggling a little bit now and wouldn't mind a little more ammo. I'm dead. You know, that sand trap is really fucking stupid. I said it in the Prestige Master video. And it's still true. Like in a game that's all about positioning, why would you build something that immediately takes that ability away from you? There is no death in the sand trap that is caused by a skill issue. It's all completely random. Anyway, that pretty much does it for explaining the strategy. So I'm gonna cut to the montage. We'll check back in in another 20 rounds or so, and I'll let you know how I feel. You know, assuming I get that far. Hello? I still had a hit of health, no? My screen was not red. I don't think I took damage from a baby, baby zombie in that time. I honest to goodness, I, I can't tell. So I'll come back and practice that at some point, but for now, we're gonna move on to Moon. All right, and here we are on Moon. So for every Black Ops 1 map, I've been doing preparation for my video on reaching level 1000, and I decided that I'm not gonna do that with Moon. Not because I don't need the practice, but I simply want to change things up a little bit. So I think instead we're gonna do a one-box challenge. If you don't know what a one-box challenge is, it's like a two-box challenge, except only one. And if you don't know what a two-box challenge is, you didn't watch Shinonuma. And we're gonna need a little bit of money for this. So I'm actually going to skip Jug, even though we got it here, and just go straight for the box. And we're even gonna skip Quick Revive. We are gonna get the money from it, but we're not gonna buy it. And I am going to remember to turn my voice volume on for this game, because uh, I need to be able to hear. So it looks like the box spawned in the power room. So we're gonna open this door here this door here, and this door here. And if you can believe it or not, that door too. Now we're gonna wait to turn on the power, because I don't have the money to both hit the box, and open that door to get to the hacker. And if an excavator shows up, it's going to be a problem. So for now, we're gonna wait until I can get the box, and then we'll turn on the power and get all that good stuff going. Speaking of which, I don't think the zombie respawned. Well, this is new. There he is. What are you doing over here, buddy? Die. That's actually a huge max ammo. We kind of needed that. Now, we only get one shot at the box, so we do kind of need this gun to be good. And the way I'm going to do this challenge is that I'm allowed to keep and pack punch my M1911 after I get 
the weapon I get from the box. Just because I don't often get to use the M1911 Pack-a-Punched in BO3, and I don't know, I think it'll be more fun that way. After all, the only reason we are here today is for a bit of fun. So let's get that fun started by you giving me a good gun. It's not... Yeah, it's not a good gun. It's actually probably the worst gun you could have gave me. I mean, that's not true. I can buy ammo for the L car off the wall, but that's about where the positives end. Anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and turn the power on now. And we'll open that door. We can pick up the hacker and open another door. Then we have one more door. And we're gonna open this door as well, and we're gonna go straight to Area 51 so we can get Jug the next time it spawns. So right now, you're gonna be Speed Cola. Let's see if we can get a little money off of these guys. And we can teleport back, and we can pick up Quick Revive. So thankfully, ammo for the Elkar is fairly cheap. The downside is that it's a lot farther away than I thought it would be. And given the map layout, it's not exactly going to be easy to get back there. But in the meantime, we do have ammo. And I'm going to use that ammo to get the money for Jug, Double Tap, and then probably Widow's Wine. And then I'll go ahead and pack a bunch of both of my pistols in. That'll pretty much be the setup done. Man, look at this. It's been one round. Less than one round. And I'm out of ammo. The L car cannot see me through round five. Do you, do you see the problem with this gun? Do you see the issue? Oh, and you're right there. That's... You know... Do you get affected by in-play sight? You do. Great. Uh... Oh, I ran out of oxygen. Right. Not gonna lie, kinda forgot about that. Anyway, we have more ammo. And you know, since that's where the wall buy is, I think I might play this game in the spawn room instead of in the biodome. It's not exactly a great place to be, especially when all you have is an L car, but I won't have to run across the entire map to get back to ammo, so, you know, you take what you can get. I feel like at this point the gates should have gone down on Area 51, and if they have, I'll probably end up pack-a-punching my M1911 just so I have another gun if I need the ammo. Yeah, they're down. And we're gonna teleport back. We could pick up Jug, and we're gonna try- oh, I don't- I don't really have time. I was gonna try and hack pack-a-punch, but uh, yeah, they're- they're already here. So we're just gonna drop you off, wait around a little bit. And there we go. Now I am gonna try and get some money in here. And that should be enough to get ourselves double tap. And I said I was gonna get Widow's Wine, but Widow's Wine in this particular room with all the windows is really not a good idea. So I think what I'll do instead is probably stamina up. Cause like, my other options are Speed Cola, which isn't terrible, but the Elkar already has a pretty fast reload with the Fast Mags attachments. Mule Kick won't do anything because it's a one box challenge. And I don't think this map has a Wonder Fizz, so like, I don't really have any other option. So yeah, we'll do Double Tap and, and Stamina up. In fact, we can get both of them right now. So there we have Double Tap, and we'll open the door to Tunnel 11. Hello, my home, but we're not going to be here today because we want stamina up. And, you know, I'm just going to open these doors to get back and save me the time. We don't need anything in here. Not a big deal. But I'm also going to pick up a little more ammo. So we are eventually going to pack a punch of the L car and probably put an alternate ammo type on it. I say probably. We're definitely going to put an alternate ammo type on it, but it's probably going to be dead wire. I could pack a punch by the end of this round, but I'm going to want to hold off on that because this is my only point gun and ammo is real cheap right now. And I want to keep it that way for as long as I can. And I mean, we have double tap, so really our time to kill is actually still pretty damn good. So it's not like we even need the extra damage just yet. Yeah, we're on round 17 and ammo in the L car is becoming hard to come by. We have to do an ammo run pretty much every round now. So we'll probably pack a punch 
fairly soon. That or we just rely on the M1911 a little more. I think we can make it to round 20, perhaps, before we pack a punch. I just don't know when we're going to be getting more than 45k around. I probably should know that, but I have not been keeping track of money. And even if I do pack a punch, it may not change the situation very well. I don't know what the pack a punch to Elkar is really even like. Okay, we got a max ammo of that round, and still, we barely have enough ammo to get through the round. We're gonna pack a punch right now. Now, I think when we teleport, well, first, we're gonna run and hack the pack a punch first. But while we're pack a punching, we could take a look and, yep, that speed cola. So, if I do go down at some point, I can get jugged back immediately. So, that's good. Oh, dead wire first try. Let's go. Bye bye, Earth. All right, we should be pretty good for round 30 here. Now, listen. If I make it to round 30 with just an Elkar and you don't subscribe, well, that would be pretty rude. That wasn't round. Is that round? No! <laughs> I set it up so perfectly. It would have been so cool. The spit. Are you round? There was one more left. <laughs> Couldn't have gone any other way. Never change, Moon. Except please, please change. Anyway, on to Origins. So here we are on Origins. So for this game, I have something fairly specific in mind. There are a lot of people who find Origins fairly overwhelming, and that's mainly because they believe you really have to get all the stabs and make all the buildables, and more or less do the entire damn easter egg every time you play this map. And Origins is one of my favorite maps because you do not have to do any of that if you don't want to. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a strategy that doesn't involve building any staff, doesn't need any buildables on the map at all in fact, doesn't have you fight the panzer or deal with any of the mud on the map. It basically turns what can be one of the most difficult maps in the entire series into a giant open training space like Ascension. It's one of my own personal favorite ways to play the map, especially on the BO3 version, because there's no stakes at all. Let's go ahead and make use of this sword flay. Let's go ahead and open the map up. We can get our shield. We don't have to for what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna get it anyway. We are gonna pick up the discs, and we're gonna pick this up out of habit. The only reason I'm picking up the disc is because we are going to be going to the crazy place for this strategy. Believe it or not, it's actually where we're going to play the entire game, and you'll see why in a bit. I'm simply picking up the G-Strike stone out of habit. Another shield part, and another generator. We'll open the door to no man's land, get this, and this. We'll go ahead and turn on another generator, and we'll go ahead and pick up Jug. I see our shield part there, but uh, guy is in the way here. So we'll pick up our next shield part, and we'll go ahead and build our shield down here in the wind tunnel. Open up to Gen 5, turn on Gen 5, and we can grab a cheeky wind disc while we're here. And now that this is powered, we can grab stamina. Ooh, free Mauser ammo, don't mind if I do. Now I'm realizing that I never picked up Quick Revive earlier, but I think I might actually lean into that. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit of a one life challenge. Get another Maxis part, open up Gen 6. Might as well put this down here. And there's Gen 6 powered. Now I'm looking for the fire disc. I don't see it? I don't think I saw it. Oh, it, it was somewhere there. We'll go ahead and open up the mound, grab ourselves a gramophone, and now that that's lowered, we can pick up you, pick up our final drone part, 
and we can go ahead and build that drone right here. And that's really all I want to get as far as collectible, buildable things go. I could do this strategy without the shield, and I could definitely do it without Maxis if I wanted to. I just happen to get them along the way. So before we get to the strategy itself, I do want to get Speed Cola. I want to get Double Tap, but I think I want to make that my fifth perk. So I might try and get something like Widow's Wine out of a Wonder Fizz. And I'd like to get some weapons that I'd want to pack a punch. Not entirely sure what I want yet, but I'll know it when I see it. I'm actually gonna stop filling that up so we can work on getting ourselves a free MG-08. Because that's gonna be the best way we can fight the Panzer without pack-a-punching a gun, which he can't afford to do right now. I'm just really worried about him ending the round. And he ended the round, okay. Well, we're fighting Panzer with an MP40 and a KRM unpack-a-punched. I'm sure this will go very well. You know, theoretically, we could still get the MG-08. We just have to go into the trenches with a Panzer and no really good gun. But I think it might be the best option I have. And now we get to do a whole lot of running. And I'm realizing now we don't have a whole lot of ammo left in that MP40. And you could have been a max ammo and saved the day. Anyway, we have our free MG08s. And all of a sudden, the Panzer, not all that scary. Not all that threatening. There he goes. So at this point, I'm gonna go back to focusing on perks. First, I'm gonna get the perk that I probably should have got while I was already down here, which is Speed Cola. And we'll go back to Wonder Fizz. See if we can't get ourselves Widow's Wine. Hey, there we go. And now we're gonna need a lot of headshots to get Double Tap. Uh, oh wait, is it headshots for Double Tap or is it money spent? I don't remember. I think it's money spent. I'm pretty sure headshots are for the free weapon you get from the Trials. In any event, I'm gonna want a gun that isn't the MP40. You know what? I'm gonna take a ray gun. I mean, I don't have the money to take anything else right now, but I, I, I feel like having the ray gun today. I'm gonna try and get our trial reward. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll actually, I changed my mind. Origins exclusive STG. I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with you. Hey, golden shovel, not bad. You know what, I'm taking the Origins exclusive, we're going with the STG. So we're actually set up to do what I want to do in this game, the only thing left is to pack punch the STG, and then get an alternate ammo type on both of these weapons. I'm thinking the classic combo of Turned and Deadwire would be good, but I would also take Blast Furnace if they gave it to me. Anyway, that should be more than enough money to get what I need. We'll start with pack-a-punching. We'll start with turning on generator one. <laughs> Alrighty. Now. Now we can start with the STG. And let's try and get an AAT on you right away. Uh, I'm okay with turn. I would have preferred turn to be on the magna collider. And it is. Okay. Let's see what you give me then. We got dead wire. Alright. We're gonna have you break my shield. Pick up a new one, and we're gonna go into the crazy place. All right, we're here. And now what we're gonna do is leave immediately. So something I wanna do is because I picked up all the discs, is that I wanna go through each of these teleporters at least one time. Doing that will allow me to leave through any teleporter in the crazy place. So if I'm down in the crazy place and see the Templar zombies taking a generator and really need the max ammo for whatever reason, I can then go through whichever portal is the closest to where they are, instead of just going through the wind tunnel every single time. Just a small little optimization I wanted to do. Not at all necessary since once we get into the crazy place, we're probably never going to leave. And that's because if you see here, the walls that normally drop while you're in the crazy place are not falling. And they're not gonna fall until you pick up one of these stones, which obviously we're just not gonna do. The downside is that we don't get to use any of the cool staves as wonder weapons, but if you have dead wire and turned, you don't really need them. And this is a casual strategy anyway, so it's not like we're 
trying to do anything special here. This is for the players that want to turn their brain off and shoot zombies without having to look up a guide. Anyway, that'll be our last fast travel. You can tell that's the case because all four of these are up. And I'm gonna go through one more time because I don't want the gramophone to be here, I want it to be at wind. So we'll pick you up one last time, go ahead and place you down one last time, jump through our portal, and here we are, our new home. If you're not familiar with the location, we have a wall by right here for the Vesper, and a wall by right here for our beloved STG-44. And now we're ready to train until our head explodes. As you can see, this area is really fucking big and really fucking open. And while the zombies kind of spawn from all around you, the space is so open that anyone of any skill level can train here. You have to be really, really bad at video games to be caught here. Like, I bought Widow's Wine because it's just kind of a default perk for me, but like, you're not going to be hit running this strategy on any round. And if you do get hit, you're certainly not going to need the stun from Widow's Wine to protect you. Quite honestly, you don't even need the shield. You could run this with nothing and be fine. It is a brain-dead strategy, which is exactly what I like about it. If you're still a big fan of maps like Ascension where you can train until you're blue in the face, this is how you're going to enjoy Origins. And in case any of you were wondering, you can get this strategy to work if you have a staff. The two times in a game where the walls in the crazy place will not be crazy is before you pick up one of these stones and after you complete the entire easter egg. And I don't mean the easter egg as in acquiring all the staves or upgrading all the staves. I'm talking the very, very end of the easter egg. The walls will stop falling after you get the 100 kills needed for the final step of the easter egg. If you don't send Maxis up through the portal that spawns over here at the end of the egg, you can just train in here with a staff forever. It's not the fastest way to play, but it is the easiest. Although if you can get a staff, I assume this is the sort of thing you're not particularly interested in. You could view it as a good reward for completing the easter egg if you wanted to. Probably the best training area in the entire series. Well, it's the best if your definition of best is safest. If you're looking for pure speed, you're probably gonna say the best training area is the power room on ascension or something like that. Not exactly very safe, but very fast. Like, this would not be viable for a high round. The furthest I've ever made it running this strategy is, I believe, like, round 60? 65, maybe? And that took, I think, three and a half hours? Uh, I did a round 100 on Ascension in that same amount of time. And a reminder, halfway through round 100 is actually round, you know, 70 or 80. So at that pace, getting to round 100 with this strategy is probably... I don't know, 12 hours? Maybe 15? It's a long ass time. You gotta consider what your goals are when you decide on what's best, but this is a very good option for casual play. Which is something that Origins is usually criticized for not exactly being great at. A lot of people view Origins as this grandiose adventure that's really complicated and involved. And it can definitely be overwhelming at times, but that's largely a perception thing. If you don't believe me, turn off voices and music and play Origins. Because a lot of the grandiose and overwhelming feelings of the map ultimately come down to music and dialogue. And to be absolutely clear, that is not a criticism of Origins. It's just to say that once you strip Origins down to purely the gameplay, it's not that complicated. The most complicated things are the puzzles here, which are intended to be solved by an entire community over multiple days. The fact that you need a guide to solve them isn't a bug as much as it is a feature. And I mean, whether you like that or not is up to you. I personally don't. I put up with it because the map is really good once you get them. But as you can see here, it can be played without them, and it's a pretty alright experience. Obviously, it's elevated by the stabs, but it's not unplayable without them. But I think once we get to round, I don't know, 25 or so, I'll just quit the game. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to 25 like I've been doing now, and then I'm gonna pick up one of these stones, 
and I'm gonna show you what it's like to train in here when the walls are coming down on you. Because it is a night and day experience. You know, I'm gonna- I'm gonna let them break my shield and I'll pick up that zombie blood and we'll go get a new one. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go pick up that stone immediately because I'm honestly getting bored with this strategy. It is a really easy strategy and I- I personally just need a little bit more stimulation. There we go, we'll- we'll pick up wind. I can't even craft wind, but we'll pick it up. And yeah, you can see the walls here, they come down and it's not- quite random, but it certainly can feel random, especially when you're out there. And yeah, you can see you get a lot more interesting spaces when the walls come down. Sometimes you just get fucked like that. This is where I'm glad I have Widow's Wine. When the walls are falling, the only place you can really train is right here, and you don't exactly have a whole lot of room to do it. You could kind of train in this area here, but again, you don't exactly have a whole lot of room to do it, and the spawn locations are rather unforgiving. But you can see it is largely possible thanks to stamina up, but I'd rather well, that was rude. I'd rather just not have the walls fall at all. I remember training in here being a lot more difficult, but aside from the two hits I just took there with Widow's Wine, I haven't really been taking a whole lot of damage with this strategy. I think it's more difficult when you're out here in kind of no man's land. Oh, hello. Well... <laughs> They heard me talking shit about them, and they responded in kind. Talk shit, get hit. GG Origins. I I shouldn't have said anything. I could have I could have just ended the video. 